Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, kings and queens, and all you other lovely royalty, you know what it be. It's Jin on the mic, joined by Ritual, and we've got a lovely set already started, I believe. Oh, wait, I can't, I don't no, know. It sounds like a button check is going hey. on in progress. Uh, potentially. It does sound like the Falco uh, is coming. It, yeah, it does. It does seem like we're going to get the Falco instead. I think I'm although, hitting hit noises. No, no they're, 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 they're Are they? Oh, no, I don't think they checking. are. They are definitely, definitely button, button checking. checking. And the it's very worrisome when you hear hit noises in a button check. The important thing to remember, though, you don't have to button check with the character you're going game number one. True, but I do think Ludo is still going Falco. So I agree with you, but even still, it could be an additional mix we're going to see. That being said, as you mentioned, Ludo likely to go Mario or Falco, not because the matchups are that different, but just because it's funner. Yeah, which is raw. You I mean, I'll give it up. You have a little bit. You have just a little bit extra range, which against Game and Watch can make all the difference. Yeah, no. When it comes down to it, Ludo, uh, he talked a bit about this to uh, Lentini a little while ago, I believe at Port, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, he he likes to go Falco for matchups that just feel more fun compared to the Mario and. I can imagine this doesn't feel like a fun matchup overall, so I can understand going the Falco and everything. On the other hand, of course, Ludo did make it here with a very minor upset, him being the fifth seed, taking out Base Mage and sending them down onto the uh, loser side of bracket. So, absolutely amazing game five. It was a blast to watch, but man, Ludo just able to clutch it up a little bit stronger and get on through. Shout out to Temp. My and speaking boy. of getting on through, right? This top 16 is incredible. We've got Ludo versus Monty. We've got Apollo Kage versus Elijah Min. We've got Big D versus Big Armadillo. D versus Armadillo. And the last one is. Sorry, we, we didn't have the I'm sorry, the last one is JDV versus Ouch, I believe. Ouch? Yes. Yeah, Ouch, JDV, Ludo Monty, Apollo Kage, Elijah Man. For the record, Armadillo, I did that before the bracket loaded. That's all off the top of my head. The dome. Speed off, off the top of the dome. We are getting started right off the bat here on Pokemon oh, Stadium. It's going to be Game & Watch. It's going to be Falco. Not Ludo's main, but still a very practice secondary. Oh, 100% Ludo. Just a phenomenal player and already started to see that com combo game come through. Of course, proficient with Mario combos and just transferring it right over to this Falco. Although Monty, very proficient player in the, their own right, just needs to get something started here. Get that adrenaline pumping. And I really like the way that we're seeing Ludo approach this early on. But obviously, Game & Watch is really scary. You swing that one on save button on shield and he makes you explode. Oh, we're seeing it right now. But we're seeing Ludo willing to take these four or five pieces, reset, prioritize positioning and spacing above all else. And he's willing to play a patient. This is something that Falco kind of has the option to do a little bit more with these long combos than Mario, who has to kind of full send that really CQC distance. Yep, and ooh, I love that frame trap right there with the up air. Boom, got him with the parachute. And now look at this, Monty securing a stock. This is what we expect to see from him. Just an amazing player all around. Been doing some amazing things recently, including like top three out of Pack and Blood 8 a couple of months ago. Amazing game and watch. Starting to show it so much more. And this is immaculate play from him already. Abso absolutely, my friend. I don't think it's unfair to say he's the best in the U.S. right now with this character. Or, and, and Ludo, though not a slouch by any means, is, you can tell, but he knows what he's doing. You see the, the reflector coming out, out. Just one of the very few tools in the game that can properly disrupt Chef well enough to get back to stage that can edge guard a character like Game & Watch, disrupt him with laser, and then find you using active hitbox like Nair, like forward air, like we just saw, right, to keep these ledge traps, these edge guards going, and also uh, need we say more about the down air factor, right, that Falco brings to the table. The question is just how do you find a consistent way in against a character that just controls as much space? Nobody uh, nobody epitomizes bubble theory better than Mr. Game & Watch. Truly, truly, but you know what? Ludo with that drip back bear, beautiful job. I love this edge guard. He's so creative with the giant reflector there to go ahead and get an extra damage, and boom, the drift back there. Ludo doing a really good job of just safely spacing moves and using that to pressure Monty. But you know what, Monty finding his way through and getting another stock with that bear. Beautiful stuff from Monty, just finding these these frame traps, utilizing Foreigner on Ludo, who just kind of already in the commitment, Ooh. can't do anything, but Ooh. lines up the spike just like oh, that. Baby. There he goes, well, there he went, there he goes. Just one more stop for Ludo, two more for Monty. But the fact that you 
three minutes in, got him to 100, couldn't hit him for a minute, and then had a result of the spike to get it, is a little bit more worrisome to moving into the rest of the set. On the bright side, that feels really good to get, of course. It's a little bit notoriously difficult to edge guard a character like Game & Watch, so Ludo coming through with the Falco. All the same, though, it ain't hard to combo when you're playing Game & Watch. And Monty making it look effortless. 61% got a little bit custom with it with some of those reverse nares and up airs. But you know what? 72% looking pretty good right now. I like these down downs trying to stuff out Game & Watch's grounded approach. Monty has been kind of approaching through initial dash a lot more than you might expect from a character like Game & Watch. But that's in part two because of Falco goes up till up smash, right? Some of the better anti-airs in the game. You can really make Game & Watch pay. So Paul Miz, as we keep seeing, when you start initial dashing in, that's where that down tilt of disjoint really, really comes into play. It's just a, such a good move, and look at that, that dash attack, just safe enough to get through, but boom, catches the ledge. Ludo trying to get on through, love that stall, but it doesn't matter. Monty just locking him down at ledge. This is looking a little bit rough right now, but finally resets to neutral. I love that down air to find the combo started giving shades of Tilde. Ludo has found himself a chance again. And when there is a sliver of hope, anything is possible. He just needs to get these feet back down. One neutral interaction is all it might take, but he's not going to get it. Monty recognizing the chance that Ludo gave himself and saying, hey, hold on. I got to take that one away, man. That is the thing. When you give Monty even a second to think about what he's going to do to you, it is not pretty. Sure enough, that turtle coming through and taking out that final stock. And now heading into game two, I'm kind of curious about maybe some of that spacing was looking nice and crisp from Ludo, but maybe it just some of the pressure or maybe just not patient. I don't know what it is, but it feels like there's just a small little something missing. It's, it's you know, it's a better matchup than Mario, but it's still not a good one. Yeah. Right? You can't over-rely on laser, which might be your initial reaction. Because if you do, Game & Watch just says, Om nom, thank you for my oil spell, I'm gonna kill you at 15. In, right? And obviously, it kills a little later, because it is a percent based on how much damage it deals, but it's still an incredibly strong button to just bring online for Mr. Game & Watch. Uh, you have to space your forward air drag downs and down tilts absolutely perfectly. The up tilt pressure is gonna be, have to be perfect as well. And the margin for error is basically none in this matchup. But Ludo just hasn't been able to find the openings consistently. And even when he gets a chance, right, one drop isn't a mistake you can afford in this matchup. It's admirable. Well, the question is whether it's smart. That is the question here. But you know what? Monty finding answers to his own questions, dealing out 56 after a little bit of a rough combo from Ludo. And now, boom, we are into the tornado up there. Look at this, 84, love that drag down attempt from Ludo, just not quite able to find much extra. And the DI mix there as well from Monty to find his way out of the back air. Could have been an up air but went from Ludo, but went him killed, so instead just opting for the potential for the stock. Here looking for the reset and gonna pick it Ooh. up with the up smash, but some beautiful DI from Monty is gonna hold on to this one, find stage control, and this top plat, I'm very surprised that Monty didn't ban this stage. It's Falco's best, but honestly, Feels pretty I feel good like for Monty... Game to watch overall too, though. Yeah, but even still, by that one combo, this is a stage that Falco can and will zero to death you on. But I just don't. I feel like Monty's just confident enough in himself as a player. It doesn't matter. That being said, we're already seeing the adjustments, both playstyle and counterfeit wise, come in as. This is an even two-star game. Ludo is putting in more work already than he was in game one. Yeah, I will say Monty, I love how quick he is to fire off, understanding exactly where Ludo's gonna be scared in that corner, and boom, finds the kill right out of the gate. Although now, Monty really trying to force the issue with some of these nares. Finds a little bit of extra damage, finally, though, catching that air dodge, and now look at this, 40%, and uh, we are still racking it up. I like that retreat to the corner from Ludo, but he just didn't give himself quite enough time. But he got caught dashing before the drop through, and as a result, is gonna get put in disadvantage. The string is still going. It was close to go back again. Falco's just not fast enough on the ground to get away from Game & Watch. He has to find these reversals. And while Ludo's been creative in finding them, he, again, it's the consistency of doing so. It just keeps giving Monty these opportunities to reset, and Game & Watch is one of the best neutrals in Smash. You can't keep giving him these neutral resets. Amen, especially when if you do an illusion like that, 
you are dropping a stock fast. Monty has been doing a really good job of just recognizing some of the mispositionings of Ludo when he goes for that illusion and punishing it hard. Now, though, Ludo really trying to be for a little bit of an opening, and Monty just playing so patient, not giving it to him. I love to see that at the adaptation. And wow, Monty looking for that judge early and often here. You're right, throwing it out, why not? You're up a stock, even if it's a one and minus, you get punished, who really cares? It shows the supreme confidence he has in himself as a player and in his character that he's now swinging for the fences with these things like Chair at with the Judge, and just keeping this pressure going in new and relentless ways. And that is going to be all she wrote. Monty 2-0 now. And I believe our, we're in best of five territory now, yes, are we not? Yes. So, yeah, this is one more set to go. Monty, though, still locking up counter pick advantage. And Ludo's got a lot of work to do. Yeah, it was looking get back at this pretty one. good at the beginning of game one, looking all right, or sorry, looking all right during game one, looking pretty good at the beginning of game two, but I don't know, something about this game and watch, just very difficult for Luda to go ahead and get through. Monty, of course, has plenty of experience, um, Soul Cal player, he's got Nexus in that region, so... It yeah, is right. to be mentioned. You have the Falco experience. Nexus, for those unaware, not just a SoCal player, but also right, Fish, one of Fisher College's mm -hmm. Falco players. Very, very talented. It, and uh, someone who is willing to mix, whether he's looking for those zero nuts, whether he's looking for neutral mixes, just keep the mix going. And honestly, Ludo plays pretty similar with the Falco to how Nexus approaches the game. Yeah. Love this aggression coming through right now. Finds a little bit of damage, but now look at this. Playing a little bit more patient, but man, Monty right on deck with the overshoot. Love to see that. And right now, Ludo really has got to find something. Otherwise, he is getting sent to a loser's bracket filled with killers, including an angry Jigglypuff that wants revenge. Yeah, you made the upset to get here, but yeah, you aren't too far away from fighting him. One more time, if you get the chance. Beautiful call with the spacing, avoiding the invulnerable upset and the reversal, keeping it going. Ludo has found a huge opening here, and even though he had, didn't capitalize on the edge guard, he still has stage control for a moment. Dash is actually gonna find the reversal, and Yin, Monty now, what was moment ago looked like a solid stock for opportunity for Ludo, has now just gone away from him, and Monty is not letting this bird get off the ledge. Yeah, this is starting to get really rough, wow catches it, but you know what, Ludo ready with the tag, 153, holding on for dear life, but can he do it much longer as Monty is chasing him down? Yep, beautiful reflector there, right? Just to find your way down. I will say, if we see a game four, you might see Monty, or even in this game, they potentially start to call out one of those reflectors. We've seen it coming down a lot from Ludo, so something to keep to watch for here. here. The other thing I like that Ludo's doing a lot is this movement speed mix up, right? Mixing in the walks, the pivot walks. You'll see Tilde do it a lot. You'll see Larry Lur do it a lot. You don't see a lot of other Falcons do it, but Ludo's gonna have to make his the further adjustment with only two stocks remaining. Yeah, and look at that laser starting to rack up that bucket. That is a threatening tool if allowed to be on deck. Down throw, gets a little bit of extra damage. Doesn't find the tech chase as wanted with that laser, but doesn't matter. A little bit of extra damage. 130 trying to lock him down and ledge. Boom, up tilts. Might be able to find the jungle kill. No, sir. Monty right out of there and starting off hot. Yeah, he, Monty, I, Monty just hasn't, has found right these openings when it doesn't look like there is one. He's found these neutral resets left, right, and center. And Ludo's been able to rack on a lot of damage, but when it comes to finding the kill, it feels like Monty just gets impossible to hit for a minute at a time. And all of a sudden, it comes back even, it gets reversal. Ludo feels like he needs a swing, and Monty's been taking full advantage of that forced aggression. It's been absolutely phenomenal so far, but now Ludo really trying to slow down the pace of the game, but one whiff. That's all Monty needs to get him off of his footing and tempo. And I think that's been kind of the story of the game is Ludo went over extension and Monty starts ripping him apart. And speaking of overextension, he's not going to get punished for either of those, but those might have been just a little bit putting himself in an awkward position under the platform but managing to get out of dodge. Still has the ledge trap opportunity here again, but just not able to find too much off of it. Game and Watch so ambiguous that, Mon that Ludo just couldn't get a lock on Monty. And even though he's trading out the hits, those trades don't go in his favor. Mm -hmm. And now look at this. Ludo finally finds his way through that onslaught of projectiles. So Monty though, coming back on through. Boom, illusion back air. Ludo back in this game might have a shot to bring it into game four. 
He, okay, Monty's use of dash attack, dude, is so creative. He's just calling on these landings preemptively. Not a tool you see Game & Watch use excessively. He, it's definitely coming to the rotation more as of late, but Monty brings it to a whole nother level by utilizing that move, calling out landings. Just a burst option that Game & Watch really doesn't have another mix, another choice on, and it has called, helped Monty time and time again, and it's the big reason that now we're in an even last stock scenario as Monty tries to close this out 3-0. Yeah, it's been absolutely amazing for Monty, but now Ludo try and finds that little punish off of a whiff Nair. Every now and again, you see a player take full control of a game and watch, and that's what you're starting to see now. Ludo, this patient really starting to pay off. And he started, he found the secret to Falco neutral, which isn't up tilt, it's not down tilt, and it's not forward air, guys. It is forward tilt, down angle, neutral angle. It just resets the situation and it get off neutral. It's so fast, it does more damage than you think, and it can set up the tech chases. It's, Luna's been mixing it in this last stock and a half to beautiful results. He's found a percent lead, but now with stage positioning not in his favor, finding a way down is going to be integral to him forcing a game four. Yep, Monty coming on through, trying to force the issue, and look at that. I love that run of shield. We've seen a lot of Ludo kind of patiently waiting and getting that up tilt in the past stock. So Monty going ahead and finding the counter. Oh my gosh. That was fearless, dude. Ludo was asking to get headbutt. Right? The invulnerability on the head there, too. You have to call them out for that timing. If, he, if Monty just releases it preemptively, Ludo dies there. But instead, Ooh. it's going to be Monty in the blast zone. We're going to a game four. The illusion, the back air, the adjustments were made. They've now split games on Battlefield. But Ludo going into game four has to remember, hey, Monty's got the counter pick for the rest of this set, and you immediately see it. We're going to small battlefield, saying, hey, I like a lot of what that stage we had going on, but I don't like the top platform because you like it a lot better than yeah. I do. So I'm gonna take that away, keep the rest <laughs> of the parts I like, and maybe flip this one just a little bit in my favor. I do think that Ludo was making a lot of really good adjustments. Of course, we saw some more of those F tilts, and overall, it just felt like he was trying to bait Monty in to get aggressive, try to force the issue and make it a 3-0, and then with punishing him with up tilts, with F tilts, and it has done so much better, but right now, Ooh, love that reflector to get through the barbecue there. And the grounded illusion too, again, right? We just saw that and for the first time there at the end, the footstool firebird okay. racking on the damage. It's now Ludo busting out all of the tricks left in the tank, smelling blood in the water, recognizing, hey, I'm down 2-0, but I got that game. Monty felt the need to force it in three, so clearly he's nervous here in game four, as you were talking about, Yin. And Ludo knows if he can get that game five, this set might be his for the taking. And it's just about keeping that discipline and letting Monty fall into the trap of his own overaggression here. 100%. Love these up tilts, but a little bit of a misspacement on the back air and an aggressive illusion gonna cause quite a bit of damage. That is the one thing you have to play so careful around that shield, otherwise you are getting popped with the trampoline. Love the difference in timing right there from Ludo recognizing that, but... And the spacing Dang. from Monty! Finding that under the edge of platform, right down smash, working as an anti-air, but also covering that landing next to plat when you don't want to commit on top of it. Just covers so much space and kills when it finds the mark. There was nothing for Ludo to do there, but finding these illusion kills, Monty has not once been ready for that burst option when it's at kill percent, and he needs to lock that down because Falco is going to get so much mileage about being able to kill you from mid stage. All right. Ludo trying to play patience, but getting caught up by the grab. Monty now putting on some nice, good aggression in this ledge trapping. Love that shine to go ahead and pop it out, though. Uh, now the back air finding that. Just Ludo's mix up in his playstyle pressure here has been amazing. But right? he's not looking for these long combos off up tilt anymore. He was recognizing that those can turn into scraps and didn't go his favor. He's willing to take these hits to scrap with the F tilt, play the fun these game, slow it down, um, and again, let Monty fall into the trap of his own over aggression. Monty finally DIing that properly, not again, not gonna die to the back area yet. And not once but twice, going for the judge on the way down too. Again, he's getting antsy. Yeah, Ludo is really starting to struggle though to find these kills. We've seen three, four miss kills off of an up tilt, and that might become an issue later on in this game. Monty, one good hit, and he could go ahead and bring this to his lead. I like that bucket. We haven't seen it a lot this whole set, but Monty showing you he still has a couple tricks left in the tank too. And speaking of tricks, this is the first time we've seen an edge guard in a moment from Monty. How's Ludo gonna find his way back? He's looking for a high illusion. 
no top platform, no problem needed. He clearly realized that going high oh. works, but it doesn't work when there's an up smash in the way that Buckethead is gonna make it hurt. I love that connection right there. Of course, Monty recognizing Ludo feeling antsy in the corner and using Illusion, but man, you can't roll in the face of danger. Otherwise, Ludo gonna snatch up that stock with a down tilt. And now, Monty though, firing right back with a little bit of damage. 51, spot into this tech chase. Yeah, I like that, just that up special, and then the fall, no, no key needed. However, down air is gonna find a combo. There's a huge opening for Ludo to even up this percent. Keep the pressure going, find some safe control. Getting the crap he's at after all that and the edge guard opportunity could be huge for him, but he hasn't been able to find an edge guard on Monty. It's all about what comes after, and he's just not able to find the mark. Yeah, and oh my gosh, Monty getting nice and scary there. I like the fact that Ludo not trying to mess with that, but he oh! In. He's still living though. Lucky for him, you no way he just rolled in again in the face of another up. You know what? I respect it. You won't dive here once there's no way Ludo or Monty expects it the second time. That back air very nearly killing, but Lu Monty just barely surviving. Ludo's illusionary onslaught here as we move into the closing minutes. The clock is ticking down. The percents are ticking up, and it's gonna be Ludo forcing the game Dang. five just like that, Yin. Okay. One more chance. Can okay. the blue bird make the upset of the tournament so far, in my opinion? I'm excited to see what Ludo has going, because right now he's starting to cool the brakes, not just fall into some of these traps, but I don't know, there's a couple of moments where I feel like he gets antsy. We saw that roll into up smash. We saw the illusion once again also caught by an up smash. So there's been a couple of times during this set where Monty puts on a little bit of pressure and Ludo cracks. So can Monty bring the pressure and break it, this bird apart? Or will Ludo stay cool, calm, and collected and pull through? Let's find out. Ludo's, as you mentioned, my friend, Ludo's patience has really been that X factor for him here. Monty was dominating the fast-paced game, and finding the edge guard, scraps, nares, huge combos. But since then, Ludo just said, okay, you run up, I'm gonna F till you. We're gonna slow this way down. Nothing left to do. And he started to find these down airs and call out neutral air as well. Beautiful adjustments from him. And so far, Mondi just feels like he has to find a hit. He has to find this neutral air. We haven't even seen a down air attempt to get a combo started because he isn't even looking for the grab right now. He's tunnel visioning in and it might be his downfall. It could be. And you know what? Ludo taking full advantage right now. Playing it nice and calm, but getting caught by that forward air. I do like the fact that Monty is still willing to let those rip when Ludo seems like he wants to go on the aggression. Now though, 88%, Monty's finally finding some damage here. Now that damage is huge. To keep this one close, the bomb not gonna do it just yet. The immediate illusion, you gotta be careful because that will conserve your momentum. The blast zone, avoiding two smash attacks with just some tricky timing mix-ups and looking for the back air to close it out. But the startup of up special, Gonna low profile the back air and allow Monty to find the advantage, say take the stock and get his first lead since game number two. This is huge for him. It is looking really good for Ludo now. And boom, back air. He could definitely find the stock though. Monty starting to secure and this might be the chance that he needed. You mentioned this is the first time that it's really looked clean for him since game two. And he is starting to take a good advantage of it. And what's really interesting is we don't think of Falco as a super defensive character, right? But Ludo has been able to maintain such a lock on the pace of the game between Eftel and Laser when he has the lead. It's deeply impressive. But as the second Monty got the lead, Ludo is like, okay, I have to approach now and just can't find a way in again, right? It looks like the first two games. This matchup has really been who takes the first stock. Okay, that's who we're seeing win the game. And Ludo needs to find a way to get away and get a break, and he's gonna have to do it down three stocks to one, the reverse three stocks Dang. to complete the reverse 3-0. It does not become a taller task than this, but you have to start with one and Ludo doing that perfectly. And now this is his chance, not able to find the extra conversion off the illusion. And I love that Monty just being ready to pop that tram, get out of the combo. But now another 50%, Ludo actually starting to really tear up Monty. Just zoning in right now. And if this gets to an even last stock scenario, Oh, the momentum that was all of a sudden in Monty's favor is going to get blown out of his chest, like wind out of his sails, like he got hit in the solar plexus because 
you are gonna be gasping for air. Monty needs to find a huge combo here, and he's got the juggle, but not getting under the position. He's holding that center stage open space and allowing Ludo to just use the platforms to land for free. Yeah, and right now, he's also landing so many lasers to control the stage. Up air, almost finding the kill. Ludo looking. Not finding, though, as Monty coming down with a back air. And there's the adjustments, right? We finally see that down air Ludo tried to land with, getting called, that was working earlier, calling out neutral air. Now gonna Ooh. call out, with, get called out by an up special. Monty, though, finally wow. finding that F forward air down tilt, forcing an even last stock scenario. And Mo you can see Ludo feels the prep, feels that he has blood in the water. He wants to make like a shark and kill edge that prey, but Monty just trying to hold on at this point for dear life. Monty strained out of his mind, full on trying to make the pressure. Stack on Ludo, make him crack 71% to 27. This is one good combo away. Look at that aggressive down air. And now getting caught up, Ludo. And getting damage on here. And Ludo like waiting out these keys with his grab, everything else is uh, incredible to watch. The crowd is starting to heat up as the moments tick down. They can feel Ludo has the momentum. He's willing to wait this out. His Ethel beating out up smash. He's waiting patiently and playing onto this platform, taking forward air, air off the table entirely. How is he getting away oh! with it? And unfortunately, the time runs out, my friend. Yeah, it just felt like Ludo was playing a little too close to Monty, and Monty recognized it. Up smash after up smash, he knew one would hit eventually. It was just a matter of when. Beautiful job by him, and uh, wow. Shout out to Monty securing his slot in a top eight winner side. Seesaw just beat ba For those wondering what's going on behind us, Seesaw just beat Base, Base Mage, Mage down in out. losers. Base Mage getting double upset, first by Ludo 17th. and then by Seesaw. Losing the Seesaw in both doubles and singles, that one's gotta hurt. If, I, if I'm Base Mage, I'm going home, I'm getting on, on Smash Bros, and I am grinding the Incineroar Dude, matchup. I don't know what it is, but uh, if you guys haven't been keeping track of a lot of Base Mage's recent results, just feels like PNW's got his number. And uh, once again, going to be going home, losing to two PNW players who upset him and, in bracket. And here's another thing. If you look at Base Mage's recent results at pre-locals, he's destroying everybody. Yeah. And then he is underperforming. He tweeted out before the event, hey, wonder if I'm cursed. Wonder if that curse is going to apply, if the curse of the pre-local curse is going to apply, of doing really well at the pre-local and bad at the event. Guess we'll find out tomorrow. Most players were not consider getting, you know, six, you know, 17. Uh, I was gonna say 17 here at, at Grand Slam yeah. to be an underperformance, but for base mage, when you're the fourth does. seed, yeah, which you know, understandable, but I'm sure he'll come back and hit that grind. Just gotta break that curse one day, and uh, you know, if anybody could do it, base mage sure can. He absolutely can, and speaking of, sure can do.